Coming to you from Final Third Cigar and Whiskey Lounge in Ingalls, Indiana. Indiana's exclusive Aladino Cigar Lounge. It's Final Third Friday. Well, welcome back to Final Third Fridays. I'm Isaiah. And I'm Rob. And today we're going to be pairing an old pairing we did once before with yeah. last year's release of the Mil Diaz Marinitos. This is the 2023 release. And we're going to be pairing that today with uh, cream soda. And then as well with our pie. Yes, coconut cream pie. Coconut cream pie. That was our tasting note the last time we did this. So we decided, well, um, who doesn't like a little bit of co- oh, coconut cream pie yeah. in the morning? And then um, for dessert, we're going to drink a little bit of our um, our backbone yeah. um, barrel pick that we did. So, so. Uh, if you have not smoked this cigar before, it, it's basically the same Mildias <laughs> construction, just with a dark Sumatra wrapper on it. Yeah. Um, just as it's a Maduro Mil Diaz, and there's nothing bad you can say about it. No, there's not. Um, and we've had these in here for a couple weeks now, and um, we they find there. I, I like. It's funny. Crowned heads are always kind of the same. They got to sit for a couple weeks, which honestly, that's kind of any cigar that transits, you know, a little bit over time. Yeah. Um, but these are starting to smoke really well. We've had a lot of people really enjoying them. So I uh, decided excited. to wear a, my new crown heads hat today. Nash yeah. Pro Smokes. That's it looks amazing. like a Bass Pro Shop hat. I, love, I thought it was a Bass Pro. Yeah, I know. In. Yeah, straight up. That's it looks awesome. like Bass Pro. It, uh, they just completely ripped off the the logo. So Let me see the fish. Yeah, I think it's the exact same fish. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> they could have at least did like a different fish. No need. No need, man. Literally, I mean, nobody questions it. They I just need one of those. Everybody ones. just thinks it's Bass Pro Shop. That might be the best one I've seen yet. Yeah. And then it just says crown heads on the back, per usual. Yeah. But if you haven't seen crown heads, man, they're um, their hats their are hat great. Games, yeah, pretty much so the best good. out there. Oh yeah, definitely in the cigar, in the cigar game. What are you getting on the cold draw of this? Ooh. I went a, I went with the straight cut. Looks like you did a V I did on a yours. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I'm getting a kind of kind of a sour sweet note. Hmm. What is that? I haven't had anything to drink today. I've had water. There's, you know what I'm saying? That little kind of sour almost. It's almost like uh, the green raisins, the golden raisins. Okay. Okay. It, you know, they, they have that a little bit more acidity, acidity to them. Yeah, that, that may be it, which has me a little nervous because sometimes that means it's uh, the tobacco is a little young. I don't know. I just smoked one of these the other night, and it's fantastic. But. All right. I'm ready to get into it. Let's do it. Here, let's nose our, you know. Nose your A&W cream soda. <sighs> vanilla. Yep, it just smells like vanilla and corn syrup. Oh, gosh. And there's no caffeine in this, which is not a good thing. It's I just caffeine sad. today. Oh, goodness. This is this is going to be, once again, probably my favorite pairing. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm just hoping you, the coconut cream pie doesn't wreck the palate. That's what I'm worried just about. Just because of how fatty it yeah, is. We, we probably should. Um... No, let it, let's get into the <laughs> cigar first. You're uh, just trying to eat. I just want some pie. Yeah. Bum, bum. So I'm toasting the foot on mine. And uh, I actually did remember to fill my lighter today. Good. So, yay me. Congrats. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. Final Third Cigar and Whiskey Lounge. Final Third... What what we call this show? Final Third Friday. Final Third Friday is intended for immature audiences only. Listener discretion advised. Yeah, it didn't quite go off the way I was hoping. No, it didn't. What a way to start your morning. Mm. It does all of the uh, baking spice. There's like a uh, cedary, leathery thing in there. Leans a little bit earthy. Um, oh, my goodness. Okay, that, that kind of sour sweet note. 
is coming out as umami. Okay. It's actually really nice now. I mean, on the nose, I'm getting quite a bit of pepper. Yeah. But on the palate alone, it's just that umami, the light, light shoe leather kind of thing going. Yeah. All right. That's now nice. onto the cream soda. It just adds like a cinnamon or or like a toasted oh, baking spice quality dude, to I'm the cream soda. I'm still getting coconut. Are you really? I'm getting coconut again, man. <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, yes. I'm getting coconut again. Especially after it sits on the palate for a minute. Well, now that you've sat it I know, in I'm my head. head. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. It's almost like we should be pairing a rum with this. We could, <laughs> Except that I would like make Rob better. sad. It made me very sad. You getting into your pie? Yes, I'm going to get into my pie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to watch oh, people fat eat, guys eat, smoke, pie. and drink? <laughs> you know what eat, they drink. could call this? The <laughs> Eat, Drink, Smoke Show. Well, we could call it Eat, Smoke, Drink Show. Eat, Smoke. There's, I think Eat, Drink, Smoke Show is already out there. Shout oh, out. It, it is out there. That's Shout Tony out. and Fingers. Tony and Fingers. Shout out. Cheers. Cheers on a can of soda. <laughs> yeah, Tony and uh, Fingers were in here the other day. They're uh, recording for the, ra the race, which this will be coming out the Friday before yeah. the race. Um, Tony does the, the pregame show for the race, and he always talks during the week coming up to the race about what cigars you ought to pick up and smoke for your race day celebration. And he came in here and, and got one from us, and it was the 1502 Anniversario 10. And that's going to be the one from us. And he'll probably have four or five other shops around central Indiana that you can go out and mm -hmm. get your pack of cigars to, to get ready for the race. So great idea. And I, I think it's it's awesome that he's willing to use his platform on 93.1 and, and the Eat, Drink, Smoke podcast, too. I'm actually impressed that that pie did not ruin my palate for the cigar. The, the oil's not as heavy in that as uh -uh. I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Although it did kind of knock a lot of the flavor of the t cigar out. I mean, down. Yeah. Yeah. It makes the cigar a lot prettier. Like It does. Kind of brighter. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Your coconut grain this should pie, be, man. This should be like an OnlyFans <laughs> thing going here. Two fat guys eating pie on on camera. It's amazing. I need to unbutton no, your just shirt. <laughs> Go full Caldwell <laughs> all the way down to Oh, there. my gosh. People don't want to see that. I'm not built like Robert Caldwell. <laughs> Robert Caldwell is seven foot tall on a rail. He's yeah. not really built. <laughs> He's built like a stick. <laughs> it's still better than what I got going on. kind of want to play with all three of these. Oh, yeah? You're going to get into the whiskey as gosh, well? It's just, it's just too late to be starting whiskey this late. Built, uh, today on Gluttony Hour... <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Did you ever see um, Eat, Drink, Drink, Smoke? <laughs> eat, eat, Drink, Smoke, Drink More. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was it? The uh, Remember the uh, church lady on Saturday Night Live? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was one of the funniest things I ever saw. We should, uh, we should recreate that in a different way for us here. <laughs> I was uh, cracking up. I was listening to somebody describe Ooh. like their. It, it is just like red fruits now. Oh, that's so good with that pie. Yeah. Um, I was listening to somebody describe like their sort of church when they were growing up, and you know what they used to describe it? What? <laughs> Fried chicken, Bible beaten. <laughs> Like you can picture the guy. He's in oh, a yeah. full suit, oh, like yeah. a big dude. His hair is kind of like cur he's like half bald on one side, but it's kind of curled over and falling in his oh, face. Yeah. yeah, man, sweating like crazy. <laughs> <for fruits. laughs> always, <Yes>. always. He's <laughs> thought about handling snakes, but he hasn't done it quite no, yet. But there is a lot of grease in his hair to make sure that it's hung down just right. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> well, I was cracking up at that. I was like, that is a great descriptor. Oh, like, it really is. But, What's up, Will? Yeah, since you were mentioning uh, <laughs> church people. <laughs> That's great. Fried chicken, so, Bible beat. So on this, uh, on on the YouTube channel on this one, if you have any comments about your church experience, throw them out there. <laughs> yeah. Fun ones only. Let's don't let's don't bash. Fun ones only. Yeah. There you go. Oh my goodness. So you were telling me about the Beams, uh, Beams yeah. new single mall. Yeah, I just saw it. It's um. So Beam has a single mall. It's uh, Freddie No that's created this one. And it's called Claremont Steep. Um, I don't know much about it. No much if, if you know anyone's really had it yet. It may not even be out yet. Um, but it's their first ever single malt, which I think that's really cool because a lot of these big distilleries are starting to jump on the bandwagon and get into these American single malts. Um, I think it's great. Yeah, it'll the, be fun. The interesting thing to me will be to see price point because the last time Beam released a single malt. Was in Little Book Chapter Six. Yeah. Oh, so they have released one. It wasn't all single malt. Okay. I think Little Book Chapter Six was majority single malt, but gotcha. this uh, Claremont this is supposed to be steep all. is a five year old, which is crazy because they couldn't even five find they couldn't even find five year old single malt for Little Book Chapter Six because um, Little Book. Of course, they won a hundred sixty dollar price tag for it. Is that what they're asking for it? No, no, no. That was oh, what little, little book. book was, and it was a two, two and three year old single malt that that they had used uh, some sort of smoked woods in. Well, this tells me this is going to be super expensive because he's talking about how this was the hardest thing they've ever done at Beam. Blah blah oh, blah. I'm, I'm sure like, of that. Here we go. Two hundred bucks off. Oh no, fifty nine ninety nine. It's ninety four proof. Fifty nine ninety nine. It is kind of sad, but that's actually a decent price point for something brand new and special. They they say yeah. special, so so it is approachable. I'll have to see if I can get any of that in here to try it. Yeah, it'll be fun as uh, Kentucky gets more into the American single malt game to kind of see what their signature is because there's been a lot to come out of Colorado, out yeah. of the Pacific Northwest. Um, well, I had that conversation with somebody a lot this out week. of Texas, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's funny how a lot of these distilleries from um, around the country. I mean, like again, like Colorado. I mean, that two ninety one that Will brought in for us to try. Mm -hmm. um, all the stuff from Peach Street is amazing. Yeah, um, Stranahan's has been there forever, but they're making oh, yeah. some great stuff. And I'm sure there's a lot of other ones over there too. I just can't think of them. Um, there. Oh, I know what it was. It was whiskey, the whiskey vault, the guys on the whiskey vault, yeah. Daniel and, and um, Rex. And um, they were talking about how it's amazing how great the whiskey coming out of Colorado is. And every time they see one, they get excited. He said, the cool thing about it is when they're making a bourbon, it's got such a different profile than Kentucky. Yeah. And he's like, Kentucky's kind of almost pigeonholed themselves into it because, you know what, if you're Jim Beam, it better taste like Jim Beam. That's if you're true. Buffalo Trace, a better taste, and, you know, Maker's Mark, all those, they're kind of hammered in. Out there, they can do whatever the hell they want to, and that's what's nice about craft distilleries, yeah. too. Anything they want to do. Yeah, that's for sure. So um, that's pretty exciting. It is cool. It's a, uh, I don't know, it's really cool to see just single malts in general becoming more popular across our scene because I think especially – from the bourbon world, an American single malt's what's going to get you into scotch. And not that you need to get into scotch, no. but if you're an enjoyer of whiskey as a whole category, there's a lot of amazing things well, in the scotch world. Scotch is what got me into whiskey in the first place. Yeah. And honestly, it's not a bad way to get into whiskey because a lot of scotch, especially if you're talking about a space side scotch that's more on the fruit side, um, they're 80 proof, 80 to 90 proof. They're not super hot. They're, they're, they're flavorful. They're sweet. And you can get into it. What's, what moved me over to bourbon was the fact that all the scotch I liked was so freaking expensive, I couldn't afford to buy hey, a bottle of it. you got in on like 25 I years. got into stupid. I mean, yeah, that was not my fault, but it did. that was what was offered to me. <laughs> but then you get to bourbon, and you're like, oh, I can find some good bourbon at 30, 40 bucks. Rob so, just change things. surrounds himself with people that have more money than him. So, gosh, works in his favor. It, 
Actually, it doesn't, because then I, I'm jealous. No, <laughs> that's just joking, by the way. You just end up experiencing all the things that you can't get on your own. Yeah. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, so um, kind of fun. We, uh, I don't know, most of you guys, if you're from Indiana, you know, you know of Blend. Blend Bar Cigar mm -hmm. down in Indianapolis. Great guys down there. Corey Johnson, the owner there, is a super nice guy. Um, we've got a few customers that come up here that also go there. And they had invited me to come down on a Tuesday night. Tuesday night they have steak night and some other fun stuff. Oh, yeah. And went down there, and I'm sitting at this table, and I'm looking around. There's a lot of business owners at this table, which were kind of cool. I mean, we're talking business owners that have been in business owners for years. Yeah. And I'm looking at their wrists, and these guys are like, Rolex, 50, Rolex, 60, Rolex. $70,000 watches on every wrist. I'm like, oh, I got my Victorinox Swiss yeah. Army, you know, $200 watch on my wrist here. Is that, how's that look? <laughs> Lisa's like, no, don't do it. And every one of them, it was funny, every single one of them that had one said, don't go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I'm like, all right, all right. Yeah. But no, it's a fun time. Super great guys down there. And I love what Corey does down there. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, it is a really classy establishment for sure. That's like, it really is. It's a great place to go for like business meetings and stuff like that. Also, if you want to smoke in the Davidoff line, like they've got it all. Yeah. And, um, they're the place to get all the Davidoffs. Yeah. Oh, totally. Hmm. Dude, this pie is great. I'm telling you. And I know that they, they buy it. So it's Broadway diner. Shout out. For whiskey. Okay, you can do that. Broadway Diner in Fortville. They're the ones that, they don't make the pie themselves, but they have someone that makes it for them. Okay. And they freeze them and bring them out when they're ready. And I'm telling you, it's one of the best diner coconut pies I've ever had. Yeah. And actually, if you ever go to diners and, you, and they have coconut pie, just get it. Yeah. Not diner, diner coconut cream pie is amazing. I mean, even even if they serve you Marie Collenders, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's your cigar smoking? Dude, good. I let it go out. Mine did, just too. Just because we're eating. I, I'm, like, multitasking over here, and it's pretty hard to do. I know, especially in the morning, mm -hmm. even though it's noon. No, I've been up since, like, 7. It's not even that early. I just woke up and hung hung around the house. But um, so, what else been going on? Anything? It's been uh been wild. Oh, you'll appreciate this. I'm not sure anybody on the show will, but you and I <laughs> seem to talk about uh, Thai restaurants. Oh yeah, love Thai, dude. There's one in uh, Broad Ripple that's fantastic. Okay. Um, gosh, it's like in that Broad Ripple Village area. Yeah, but. I got. I went there, got the red curry, and they had uh, Thai dumplings too, and it was all really good. Service, go check it out. Service yeah. pretty mid, but like, yeah, that that's what you get at any non-white restaurant. So, my, I, I've told you my my favorite lately, and I took Lisa there the other day. Um, is it's um, Thai or Thai Villa Cuisine? cuisine. Yeah. 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 On 96th Street and Fall Creek Road. I haven't Creek been Road. to that one yet. It's really good, but I'm always looking for new ones. I'm Adam Fox. Shout out. Shout out to Adam. Sitting out on the patio right now. Yeah. Um, he said that the one in Anderson is opening up, I think he said next month. And they've oh, been well. talking about that one for a long time. So I'm excited Ooh. about that. And hopefully, I'm just hoping it'll be good. Yeah. You know, you never know when, I mean. When Anderson, you just never know, you know what what's going to open up over there, and I hope that it's something good. Yeah. I mean, they have some great barbecue joints. I mean, Nerdy's was another one he was talking about that's over there in Edgewood hmm. that we're going to go check out. Um, so there's a lot of great food over there, but there's a lot of places that open up over there that don't survive. So yeah. I hope that they do. Yeah, no, that would be that'd be great for sure. Uh, and good it'll to be see the closest something. Thai place to us for sure, or at least here. Oh yeah, not for you, but. No, not for me. Not until you move up here. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, the closest place to me is probably Fayatai over by Fort Bend. Which is amazing. Yeah. Well, and their lunch specials are great. They so. really are. So there was another... Let me get the microphone. There was another story. A really sad thing happened again. 
um, which just happens to Fuente far too often. But they, um, they think- had a fire <laughs> to happen at their warehouse, and they've lost a million pounds of aged tobacco. And they went all the Opus stuff. Well, and the sad thing is, it <laughs> was it actually? No, I. I mean, it, it probably was some of that, but also they lost almost all, or at least most of their tobacco in the Opus field that they grow it in this uh, last year, last end of the year in a hailstorm. Yeah. So they've lost all that before, and now they've lost a million pounds of age. I mean, I have a bad feeling Fuente cigars are getting ready to go up in price a lot. Well, we'll see. This might just cause them to start sourcing more tobacco from other places. And it wouldn't surprise me if you saw something different in their upper end line. Like if if they did a lost cigar line where they were, you know, just going or, going around finding cigars that are lost in people's warehouses, you know, and just slapping a Fuente band on it. But granted also, Fuente is a big dog. Yeah. They probably have tons of... Uh, buildings full of tobacco, probably a tons of cigars are a- uh, sitting and stuff. You may not even see anything for another five or six years. It really affects them. Um, you may never. I don't know. But that does tell me that it's probably going to be a little harder down the road for, for people that actually sell Fuentes to get all the Fuentes they want. It's yeah. already been hard to get some Fuentes yeah. here recently. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But that was kind of a sad thing. And I, I don't know... This happens to them frequently, doesn't it's it? It's happened multiple times to them. And, um, I mean, Carlito um, said that he's like, you know, it happens. And we'll move on. And we'll be fine. And he's like, but, you know, but bottom line is that's, a, that's, that's millions a of dollars that he just lost in flames. Now, granted, I don't know how good Dominican insurance is, but you would think Probably. they'd have insurance on those farms. Yeah, but, but it's probably good it not good enough. Uh, probably not. I mean, a lot of that problem is is just in in the in the warehousing. So, what is going on inside of inside of that that is cause for flame? I know. You know, that, is it is it old wiring? Is it that's <laughs> ammonia? <one> that <laughs> well, and that's the thing that makes me wonder too. I mean, obviously, if it's ammonia and you have even even a spark, it's going to blow up. Yeah, but. I also wonder with the fermentation process, you know, they're constantly rotating those bales, the tobacco, to keep the heat even. And if you just leave it in there and forget about it, the middle of that bale is going to get super hot. Yeah. And I wonder if there's any way to have that spontaneous combustion happen. It could be. It I could mean, it happens with firing. hay. Exactly. Um, so I wonder if that could be happening. I, I would be really shocked to see Fuente forgetting to rotate their, bar- their bales, but... It could happen. It could. So, but uh, so that happened, and that's very sad in the cigar world. So it is sad. Hopefully, uh, they do well. Which I mean, it's Fuente. They're going to be fine. But it sucks whenever that happens. Yeah. Mm. And that really does suck. Like, it really does. Just having uh, a warehouse go down. You think about the jobs that correspond just with that warehouse. Yeah. Like, and in a country like that, like it's well, and a lot of those tobacco barns, really, when they're built down there, they're not built to take on hurricane winds. No, they're posts, yeah. and some of them you have like the hut type roofs on mm-hmm. them, and you got air flowing through there to actually help the tobacco age, whatever. And it's like it, they could probably get this thing put back up in maybe a couple of weeks. Yeah. So they may not lose a lot other than the tobacco that was aging. Yeah. Oh, well, that would and be honestly, good. it might develop more jobs because now the guys have to rebuild the barn again. Could be. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is sad. but It is sad. That's for sure. But. So this cigar, man, the um, the retro hail has, has gotten a little milder. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still a little bit of that black pepper, but it's almost more of the black pepper flavor, not the spice. I don't get a ton of like, you know, like that tingling spice going. Yeah. Um, and some of that's got to be the pie. Yeah. But I guess they, I, the pie addition probably isn't a good thing. It tastes amazing. I yeah. love it. Yeah. It's not going well with a cigar. Mm-mm. But it's not killing it completely. Not completely, but it definitely is knocking down a lot of the flavor. It is. 
So, so we're I'm going to let my pie sit, and I'm going to drink the, the other stuff first now. I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, here we go again. Your perfect race day. You have five cigars. Oh, God. <laughs> well, five cigars, perfect race day. Yeah. Uh, so you starting out your day, got your cup of coffee or maybe your whiskey. Yeah. Because I know how you start out most days. Whiskey, then coffee. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'll have to, let's see. So th- I'll, I'll tell you what I'm probably going to do this year because okay. we're going to be in here. We're going to have the race going. Yeah. So if you hear this and you want to listen to the race, we're going to have the race going in here. Obviously, radio only because we're in Indiana and, you know, it's blasphemous if you actually show it live here. So, um, but I'll probably start the day off that day with an Aladino Cameroon. Okay. Um, I'll probably kick that up after that to a knuckle sandwich habano. Um, let's see what will be next after the habano. You get into that medium to full territory. I mean, once I get past the habano, it's going to be full the rest of the day. Yeah. But um, what's your like? The one I'm going to finish tonight with, if I can get one before then, it's probably going to be my uh, Padron 26. Yeah. But. I smoked my last one the other night, and I need to buy a box. So gotcha. if it gets here in time, I'll have one by them. Um, actually, you know what I'll probably end up doing? After the um, the knuckle sandwich Habano, I'll probably go ahead and pull out one of those knuckle sandwich 55s I haven't smoked. Mm. And I, I got two yeah. left. I'm going to smoke one of those. Yeah. Um, okay, before the 55 then, I'm going to do the the Raven. I've got a Raven. Okay. I'm going to smoke that 55, and then I'll finish with a Padron. There you go. That's a, uh, but that's saying I can actually get five cigars in here. It depends on how busy we yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Rob's perfect race day. That's what that is. There you go. There you um, go. What about you? Man, that lineup is full of heat. Um, I won't actually have time to do it on. And honestly, Sunday. I just said. Yeah. I, I just said things that I have access to right now. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. there could be other ones I would get if I could just say anything I want. But Yeah, yeah. So uh, my day would probably start, start out with the uh, Crown Heads Fumato and C Major. There you go. Move up to a Pi Synastasia, which is just the Moves kinetic. up to a spi- Pi? Yeah. I feel like the Pi is milder than the Fumato. No. It's not? No. Huh. Sumato is like it has n- hardly any pepper on the retro hill. The pie does. Interesting. I'd, it's got a little bit of pepper on the. I retro guess I don't hill. get any strength really out of either one of them. But yeah. okay, go ahead. Do the pie Anastasia. Um, what would I go to next? I probably just move up to my regular Mel Diaz. So now so you I got need the trifecta going so the far. Nice. Yeah. Sadly, you can't get the pie or the sfumato anymore unless you're at final third. I think we still have some of both of those. We got both. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, actually, that's true. Once they're gone, I don't know if they'll ever release them again. No. Well, the, I think the pie will because the, they're going to do, they're gonna it's redo a different the colors blend, every though, year. I think. Well, they're going to do the different colors every yeah. year. And what they were talking about is they're probably going to, once they get to the end, they're going to start releasing 10 packs of. Or whatever, however many it's, it is, of like two of each color, hmm. so you'll be able to get the entire lineup of those colors in that painting. Yeah, which would be cool. So, okay, after my meal, Diaz, I will probably break out a Warhead Seven. Oh, that's a I, good. I still got a couple of those, and then I might end on the Knuckle Sandwich Fifty Five. I. I've got eight of those in the humidor at the house, and I've just been dying for another reason to smoke one. So, yeah, it's such a good cigar. It really is. It's such a good cigar. The only thing I might switch out is I might switch out the the fifty five and do that Los Ace Provincia, the CMW. Mm. It just depends on if I yeah. want to smoke one of my last two fifty fives or not. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I'm not like huge into the race. I like. I mean. It's kind of blasphemous saying that in Indiana, but yeah, I know. I mean, I, I went to the race several years in a row, and I had my fill. Yeah, I've but never, I like I've never been to it, um, and probably won't watch it. Well, I know I won't watch it, not live at least. <laughs> <laughs> not after the fact either. It's even worse after the exactly. fact. Ew. Ew. 
Now I am going to be going yeah, out all which you yesterday when this show airs, I'll be I will have been out at the track. For carb day? Um no, is it carb day or what? No, is carb it? day Carb Day's Friday. No. Yeah, Carb Day's Friday, I think. Okay. So we're going out. I'm going out Thursday just to hang out at Scott DeShong's campground and <laughs> drink all day. So <laughs> Well, if you need somebody to pick you up, <laughs> you let me know. All right. <laughs> I'm not far from the <laughs> big boy Uber. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Bo- boober. We'll call you Boober. Ooh. Boober. I'd rather not. Boober. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a moment to hear from our partners. Is your closet starting to feel a little weak? You know, like shoddy fabrics, misshaped, tired designs? Then Seven Strong brand has exactly what you need to reinforce your look. We're talking a four-way stretch of polyester, cotton blend, silky smooth, breathable, and above all, true to fit while keeping its fit. No? Well, what about our hidden collar button with reinforced stretching? It's pretty strong. Or how about designs that'll get you a standing ovation no matter the occasion? Happy hours to baby showers, the flight to date night, even from the shore to stepping out to the store. Seven Strong brand has button down shirts that will transition you from one place to the next and make you stand out every single time. And for listening to our show, new customers get $5 off their first purchase with code Final Third. Not to mention, all orders over $50 qualify for free shipping. And you know, just like any label on a bottle or cigar, these shirts are going to be a stamp of quality every time you wear them. So find your strength and style by checking out 7-strong.com, as well as following 7 Strong Brand on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Our wonderful new table is brought to you by Deadwood Live. That's D-E-D, Wood Live. Go check them out on Facebook and see what Derek can do for you. From bars to tabletops to a giant podcast table, they specialize in making super high quality furniture from live edge woods and reused barrels. So reach out to them on Facebook and see what they can do for you. Okay, so you're drinking all day with Scott DeShong. What is- he has like a really great thing that he does so oh, yeah yeah he, talk about that he always so him and his his crew they always take a, one to two handles of eagle rare yeah so if you ever seen the handle of eagle rare it's a 1.7 five liter bottle about that tall about that big around it does not have a handle uh-uh. it's heavy it's like a machine gun trying to pour it but you have to take a hit off that before you can even come onto the onto their little area of camping oh okay. so we'll be Taking hits off the bottle of that. There you go. And then drinking whatever else we're drinking all yeah. day. So, oh gosh. They're I want Oh, he's his. Um, I think he said his sister in law is making um, homemade jambalaya. Dang. So, and they're having, we're going to be having uh, Bloody Mary's for breakfast. Yeah. Hey, Rob, you're day. not going to be there for breakfast. I'll get there. I'm going to get there about eight, uh, about nine or 10. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he'll make one if, if they've already had them he'll make one but you know they're at the track race they're drinking all every day all week next week so they're not gonna be up by 10 o'clock either <laughs> so it's fine it's fine yeah that's funny man uh but that's the thing scott it's scott a has week been of the tailgating race for, i think he said 15 years in a row um that's one cool thing around, about indiana if you're not from around here People actually live their lives around streaking streaks of going to the race, and there's like there's guys out there that have gone eighty years in a row. Yeah, and it's like man, it's just amazing to see people with those streaks just going. I mean, it's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, around here, it's just about as big of a marker as the New Year. <laughs> Might be bigger. <laughs> I bet Might it be bigger. is. I bet the five hundred is more celebrated than New Year's. And probably brings in more money for the city than New oh, Year's does, uh, too. I bet so. <laughs> and everybody who just rents out their front yards for people to park on. Yep. 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 It's a uh, hundred bucks. hundred bucks, park your car in my yard. Yeah. And that may be cheap. It may be more than that now. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I right. get run an extension cord out for the electric cars. <laughs> That's great. Let them, let them charge off your property, <laughs> man. <be> funny. <laughs> $25 a minute. Yeah. But yeah. Dude, my uh my car was down for like the past week. 
You get it back now? Yeah, I oh, got good. it back last night. But I was driving around an 87 Chevy. Oh, I don't know. It's just the uh, basically a stripped down truck. That silver might, old Silverado? No, it's not an old Silverado. No? It's something else. Okay. Um, big old bench seat, like vinyl floorboards. Yeah. Like you could not beat up this Did it truck. have the column shifter? Yes. Oh, no, no, not not like just in the drive. We're yeah. talking about shifting on the column. Oh no, like no, a no. manual shift no, no, no. on the column. No, oh no, man, it is automatic. those things were awesome, man. Yeah. All right, um, but my, <laughs> it was my cousin's old truck that my aunt and uncle bought off of him, like just because they wanted a truck. But the thing has like a crate engine put into it, like transmission's been redone, so like the thing runs well. Good. Except for the fact that it's lifted. So, like, you got to, like, crawl into this truck, man. <laughs> uh, you can't take it through the drive-thru. Oh, geez. It's too tall it's for the drive-thru. Oh, wow. Yeah. Got giant tires on it like it's built for mud. Gets all but seven miles per gallon, probably. I think I was averaging eight. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> cost, you got the bonus. Cost me over 100 bucks to fill it up the other day. <laughs> and... uh Oh, yeah. He straight piped it. And by straight pipe, oh. I mean, he just took a sawzall straight and out. cut the muffler right Hell out. Yeah. So the thing was loud. People would try and call me while I was in the car. And it was like, <laughs> nope. Even <laughs> with, on speakerphone with the phone next to my ear, I cannot hear you. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> like he, he upgraded the radio in it. Like it has a Bluetooth radio, but like there's no freaking point in You're using listening it. To it. Yeah. <laughs> Got to have the thumping bass in the back behind the seat just to hear it or feel it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. It's pretty fun to drive. I love those old trucks, man. Until you get into, like, the country roads, and then uh, you're too wide just for your lane. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're the guy that everyone's, like, honking at because yeah. it's like I either have two wheels on the yellow line or I have two wheels on the edge of the road. <laughs> Or no, off the, off the, the road. road. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So stupid, man. It's pretty fun to drive around, though. Kind of nice. Like, I, I do miss having a beater vehicle. Because that's just one of those things where you don't give a crap what happens. Oh, I thought we were not recording for some reason. No, but okay. we are, we're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, it's just one so, of those vehicles where it's like something happens to it. Dude, who cares? Exactly. Still runs. Exactly. So that's all that we've smoked so far. And we're 30 minutes in on the cigar. This thing is burning slowly. Oh, it's a slow burner. It's a... No, it did, it did take I'm a minute. I think I'm second, third now. Oh, yeah, you're a little further than I am. The, yeah, because uh, we keep talking and not smoking or we're eating pie. 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 Makes me feel like Homer Simpson when I say pie. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? I don't know. Okay. A um, couple things for you people in Indiana. For you peoples, people. 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 Um, I have seen Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof yep. rye drop in the northern parts of the state. So keep your eye out for that. The other thing that's dropped is the 11th edition of Chattanooga Founders. Yeah. Which Dr. J. I need to try. Shout she got him a bottle yesterday. Dr. J. Actually, yeah. Will got it for him. Yeah. And um, he was doing a side-by-side -side last night, and I asked him, I said, what do you think of the two? He's like, oh, it's too hard to say on one sip. And then he goes into it and says about the one sip. It's like, they taste, they sound like they're totally different animals. Oh, I Which I is kind of cool. I mean, that, so I, that was pretty cool. I'm, I'm good to see that. So the, he, he was saying that the... The first one, the the original one, the, he always called that the root beer float. Yeah. And this eleventh, he said the first taste is a mixture of red berries and tobacco. Oh, cool. like, those are like total opposites of the yeah. spectrum. So that's kind of cool. And if I'm you know, a, if you've ever heard us talk about, we love Chattanooga. Some great stuff. Mm. Oh, and then um, Jack. 10 and 12, I've been seeing people find those. Of course, Brandon Whistler has already got a bottle a bottle of each. Drinking oh, I'm him. sure he does. That uh, that 12 is fantastic. 
I I would say the ten is too. I just haven't tried it. I'm excited to try them both. I've been trying to get it in here, and I I can't get it yet. I may never get it. Probably not. Because I'm definitely not playing the allocated game with Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get Jack Fire, Jack Honey. I'm just kidding. It doesn't really seem like Jack plays that game too they do. much. They do. Yeah. What are their What are their uh, lower tier bottles that just you have like to buy? the old number seven? I mean, honestly, the um, the triple mash and the bonded early on was on allocated, but now they're not. Yeah. <clears throat> the regular ninety four proof single barrels not. So if you can buy all that stuff, but you know if you want to get into the Koi Hills or the special releases, it's it's a little harder to get. Yeah. I'm trying though. We'll see if I can. I I did get on order, which we should be getting uh, by the time this airs. We should have it here. Penelope Architect. Sweet. This latest build. I am. Uh, I'm excited to try it. I'll say it on this show. Um, my prediction is for Architect and for the Penelope brand that in a couple years, um, the Architect is. Changed to the point where these bottles that are coming out right now will have a high secondary value. I agree. I think that I think these are. I'm not telling you to go and stock up and wait based off of Isaiah's prediction, but, but it with, makes sense. But with the MGP buying, like people are going to miss this architect at some point. Yes, or you'll be able to move it just based off of somebody collecting the every single architect build. Yeah. Well, and who knows? Who knows if MGP takes it over and just completely botches it? Well, and it you might happen. you might want to have a couple of those earlier our architects that came out of Penelope in Jersey. So, and here's what I'll tell you. Even if they don't, those architects are great bottles. Mm -hmm. So, you might sit on it for a year or two. I mean, honestly, I've not had really any Penelope that wasn't good. Mm -mm. I've not tasted the lower proof option. Yeah. But the barrel proof, standard barrel proof that they were yeah. put out was great. Yeah. The Architect was great. All their toasted series is great. Now, I did order a case of the toasted as well. Okay. But that's allocated. Gotcha. It's like MGP Penelope allocated. Come well, on. Well, I'll bet the, uh, the toasted is allocated just based off of quantity quantity yeah, yeah not, it probably is not because of but it still should be first come game. first serve damn it should be damn it it should be um oh the other thing penelope did this week in their cooperage series did you see the rio mm -mm. so it is a, it is their mgp bourbon finished in brazilian ambarana cask oh, and honey casks well, hopefully the honey kills off all that amberana, but it's not going to. People are so excited uh, about it, dude. Of course they're, they are. They're going for like three hundred bucks on secondary right now, and it's uh. And again, I hate amberana. You do. A lot of people love it, so don't take my word for it. If you want to try it and you love it, drink it. I mean, it's gonna don't be worry about honey it. and cinnamon. If I'm in line and you're behind me and there's one amberana barrel left. It's going to be yours. I'm not touching it. <laughs> so, Speaking of Amberana, Starlight just released. I saw that. Uh, Cigar Bash Bourbon and Arai. They're both first fills. And you know what they did for the first time ever this time around? First time ever? What? <laughs> no limit. Oh. So you can. That means they're not selling as fast as they wanted to like they did in the past. <laughs> There's I'm a reason for that. <laughs> I'm just telling you, uh -huh. they have flooded the market, and they have done it successfully. Yeah. And now they're like cash cow cigar batch, which they used to have full-blown events around, is not moving like it once did. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, you can only release something special so many times before it's not special anymore. Well, and the fact is that it's like even their – I keep talking so much and letting this cigar yeah. go out just because it's so such a slow smoker. I'm smoking it too slow. Um, yeah, w with those with those releases, like it would be one thing if Starlight did a double finish like Penelope just did. Like you're doing a honey and a Nambarana. Like you're dumping that into a dumping an Nambarana into a honey finish. Like yeah, dude, come on. 
Do you know how long Starlight leaves it in the Umbrella Barrel? I don't think it's super long. Because I would almost think it'd be better if you want to just get a hint of the note. Um, I'd like to. Um, I'd like to see them throw it in a barrel for maybe, maybe three four weeks, and then finish it in something else. And maybe what you would get is just a hint of those notes, and then the other thing would take over. So it'd give you the best part of it, but not be so over steep that it's like steeping dark tea with your well and the hard hard part is on these uh on these first fill like there is still so much that the wood has to give and i'm not sure that they're even resting it for over three months to get that you know it so three months is too long well i mean for me for me i'm uh, just saying you know you know what we should do and maybe i'll do it um get some of the amberana wood staves and just stick them in bottles uh when we get our elijah craig barrel no, picking, you're not <laughs> ruining you're not ruining that <laughs> hell no oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you can put it on the bar oh, oh. it's oaken no uh, final third zone version of oak and elijah three hundred dollar pour three hundred dollar <laughs> you no. know what's one thing you see People are all talking about, and by people are all talking, I mean like our immediate circle of people <laughs> are talking about the the alcohol soaked bovidas. Okay, next thing people are going to be talking about is Amberwana finished Elijah Craig bar barrel proof. No, they're not. <laughs> Only you. Only you. You can try it. You can try it if you want to, but it's going to ruin it. Yeah. Cream soda and tobacco. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I uh, <laughs> it's just uh, it's just a whole bunch of Isaiah stories today. So, uh, so there's another Isaiah story I want to I want to say. Okay. So when this this is posting on Friday, yeah, tomorrow is your last day. It is as my as last an employee. Day. Yeah. So come in. We're gonna celebrate with him all day. Yeah. Um, come in and say bye. You know. Rub him upside the back of the head. He likes that. He likes that. <laughs> <laughs> see how he kind of moved yeah, into that one I did? Yeah, it? yeah. Um, just come in and see him. You know, obviously he'll be in here as a customer still. Yeah. But this will be the last time you get to order him around to do something for you. Yeah. So come on in and do Make it. Make sure to order me around. Yeah. Um, I will be more than happy to do that one last time for you guys. <laughs> I imagine every time I'm in here, even as a customer, like, well, in the past, it's always just been like, oh, somebody needs help. I'll just get up. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, but Isaiah's story, I uh, on Monday, I got a call from whatever. So I'm getting carpal tunnel surgery. Long story short, I think I talked a little bit about it. <laughs> Don't don't do that. It's nasty. Only the YouTube see listeners yeah. going to see that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tune in on YouTube if you'd like to see the gesture Rob just made. Um, I'm getting it on Monday, but last Monday they called me and they were like, hey, we've got a couple dates available. Um, does Monday work for you? And I was like. Like this Monday? Like <laughs> next week? And she was like, yeah. I was, I was like, yeah, I mean, I guess she said, you're a little unsure about it. I was, I told her, I said, I just haven't had time to like mentally prepare for like getting surgery on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and she was like, so do you not want to do it then? I was like, no, I mean, I guess I could do it then. Get it done. And she was, I had her all worried because I was like, wait. <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, it's a pretty low pressure thing. Like, I, I don't even get put to sleep for it. Wish they would just put me down though. Well, let me know if it's if you can't work and you don't want to work, just come in and let people party with you. We can call you no, off and no, just come no, in no. and party. No, I should be fine. Okay. Uh, I just won't be able like my lifting you won't restriction. Be able to wash dishes because you won't be able to get your hand underwater probably with uh, stitches and bandage, right? I don't know yet. I haven't even thought about that. I should probably do my dishes at my house before I do get you probably surgery. should. Yeah, probably should. Maybe I'll just talk Victoria into doing it. She'll no. feel bad for me. I'll be like, hey, 
Hey, kitty. dang it! I wish she would listen to this because if she listened to this, I'd tell her don't do that for him. But she won't listen to this. No, she she doesn't. She doesn't even like cigars. Not yet. Not yet. You're gonna have to Pretty corrupt goofy, her at some man. point. Oh my gosh! Speaking of women doing dishes, um, Jeez. this is gonna get into Trey Mac. This is Trey Mac territory. That's exactly where this I was is going. Trey Mac territory. I apologize for this, but it was really funny. My grandfather on Mother's Day decided since the entire family was around to just make sexist jokes. Oh my God. Like, around the dinner table <laughs> with my cousin who's a mother, my like sister-in-law, my mom, my aunt, everybody's there. And he is just popping off joke after joke <laughs> after joke. And you're like, grandpa, dude, like he had, Here's the deal. He's got dementia, and it's been, like, really – he's been degrading. But somehow, the things that he remembers – He remembers the dirtiest of the jokes. Huh? Yeah. Nice. I won't repeat them because I don't need to give any of you guys fuel. But just um, just imagine we're all together celebrating Mother's Day, and the oldest gentleman there <laughs> – Makes mm. jokes about how women belong in the kitchen and doing dishes the entire Mother's Day dinner oh with the gosh. family. I'm like, there's nothing you could do about no. it because he's not going to remember he did it in exactly. an hour. Like, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. That's brutal. <laughs> My brother and I were cracking up. <laughs> it did not help our case. Yeah, you were cracking up because you're not married. You're not married yet. <laughs> oh no, my, my you start cracking up after you're married. She's gonna be swapping no, upside the head. My brother's plenty married. But you're not though. <laughs> yeah, I know Victoria enough. No, she's gonna learn how to swap you upside the head when you get married. Yeah. I, mean, I can guarantee that. I guess you're married into that family. I know. I know a lot of people in that family, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, like Tam. Mm -hmm. Tam's gonna be like my fifth removed, twice put on cousin, or however that twice even put on. Yeah, I don't wow. know. Wow, that sounds kind of like a sexist See, joke right there too. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's really weird, man. Rob, who hurt it's you? Who it's who hurt relative. you today? It's your relative. Hardly. It, Hardly. Oh, so you're gonna use that excuse like people in Kentucky and Alabama? Yeah. She's only my second cousin. It's fine to date her. What do you think I'm going to do with Tam? <laughs> I don't know. That's just weird. It's my sister. Stop. You're the one that slaps Stop. her butt. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even denying that. Oh, no. I, I didn't slap her butt. I flicked a towel at her. And hit yeah, her in the but butt. the fact that you did that and have done it on multiple occasions means that you have looked at your sister's butt. It's pretty You're rough, weird. Rob. You're weird. It's pretty rough. All it's right. pretty rough. Fine, I'll slap you with a towel later. <laughs> I'm going to file a complaint with HR. You should. Yeah. Maybe I'll get fired. <laughs> <laughs> she, I bet she wishes someday she could get rid of you. <laughs> you put, this entire place will have plants everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> almost. We're almost there. Yeah. We're getting there. Oh, man. Dude, patio season is upon us. It is, man. We've been the patio has been packed. Last night we were we were really busy, and that patio was completely full. Yeah. And then the storm hit. Oh yeah. And it got nasty. Everyone moved their chairs up as tight as they could inside there, and then people kind of found their way in here after they started yeah. getting wet. It got really, really nasty. It did. Um, real quick. But hey, I'm come here, here, Adam. Come here, yeah. man. Come here, Adam. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Remember this guy? Hello. You're probably too tall to even be in the camera frame. Yes. What? There you go. There, there you go. Is. There he I is. Know. I was going to be doing a horse stance in here with you guys. Yeah. Just stand there for about a half an hour. We'll talk for a minute. Hey, <laughs> we, were, we were talking about watches earlier. What are you wearing right now? Uh, it's a Victorinox. Actually, my dad got it for me. He there you it go. At a pawn shop i think he paid like 70 bucks for it nice. and it needed a battery and a coil looks great i was Perfect. looking at it brand new these things are apparently like 500 bucks something mm, like that. that's oh. tight so, oh cool i didn't pay that for mine either but i, I got <laughs> one too so yeah yeah I got, nice. I got this i had another one uh the name was beer eye it's the design of it was based after some rolex i'm not deep enough into the watch world to remember yeah which one 
uh, buddy gave me that one, and I have the other one from Original Grain. It's black. It's got the uh, some wood inlay on it. Yeah, really nice. Design on yeah, that one. I've seen a lot of cool stuff from Original Grain. They, they seem to do a lot with whiskey barrel wood. They yeah, did that, and then I think they had a partnership for a minute with I want to say it was Fender. They have like a okay. one that had like a yeah. guitar pick design on cool. it and stuff. They got some cool stuff. Going That's on tight. It. Yeah, so good prices and whatnot. What are you smoking right now? Well, not right well, now because you left up, it outside. I just finished up the 1502 Nicaragua. So okay, nice. I'm going to refill on the coffee and then have to go back in there. I'm leaning towards another one of those live structuras. Oh, yeah. They've been, Brad, the one Brad gave me was good. I think that was the one that had the Kubra wrapper. Yep. Yep. And I tried yep. that one with the Rosado last evening. Mm-hmm. Both of them were absolutely delicious. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So um, if you can't hear, I'm not sure if you can hear this or not, but the La Instructora from La Galera, he's smoking those, and they've been smoking great. Oh, yeah. We've got the entire lineup right now in there. We'll see how long they last. We've only yeah. got a box of each. Are out those there, limited? So. Um, I don't believe I so. I don't believe so. Yeah, yeah that, I hope not. I that Kubra wrapper. I mean, you're a big fan of the Kubra anyway, though. Cause yeah. The, yeah. Uh, that was the Kuko from Blackbird, if I remember. No, it's nope. It's the un- or the unkind. unkind, is the, unkind yeah. The yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. I still have, I think, nine of those Ravens sitting at home. I'm the Ravens, the Cooper with bragging. a lot of age. Quit bragging. I'm going to a barbecue Thursday, and I'm thinking about bringing about four of them for that. So there you go. You'll be treating people right. Oh yeah. I'm. I've got a whole. I've got so much crap at home that needs smoked. And yeah. It's not enough well, time if you need all. any help with your knuckle sandwich 55s, you let me know. I'm in the house hunting process, <laughs> and there's a place in Markleville that I'm um, waiting here back from the realtor about checking out yeah. probably tomorrow, but. Oh, you found one in Markable too, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the one in Ingalls, I was supposed to see that today, uh, later this afternoon, but from the sounds of it, they ended up getting another offer recently. So unless that falls through, it sounds like that house is out of the picture now. Yeah. Gotcha. But, okay. So I don't gotcha. Know, we'll see the one in Markleville. Oh, cool. Smaller, but. Uh, I don't know. Ingles would be like a lot closer there. to here, though. Yeah, I know because that one was walking distance. Yeah, it was two, two blocks up. A the little road. dangerous. A little dangerous, but yeah, yeah, man. yeah. But the drive will be closer to Markleville. It'll be ten minutes instead of half an hour. Yeah, so. that's oh, true. Yeah. That's true. Well, cool, man. All right, man. We'll go enjoy your coffee. Yeah. Get you another well, cigar. Well, you guys have fun. <laughs> Drinking black coffee is that uh, that's our original still. Okay. We still have a little bit left, and I kind of don't want to have a bunch left over to throw out until when we get the new one. So, yeah, I got gotcha. you. What a good dude! So, if you are looking for a, you know, our original, our original coffee we had in here, if you've had it and you really like it, especially if you've had it over the last couple months and really liked it, um, we got bags of them. So, if you want to come in and buy a bag of it, eighteen bucks, we might even give you a deal. Come in and buy it. So, Mr. Rich Lemon, just yes. come in. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, so, how's that cigar smoking for you? Oh my gosh. Hang on. Go cream soda to the uh, backbone. Cream soda to the backbone? Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever thought about pairing a soda uh, with whiskey. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could mix them, but like. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. So good. It adds a ton of vanilla. It does. It. The, uh, the, <laughs> the Marinitos is amazing. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Actually, they all kind of complement each other. That coconutty, the creamy, the vanilla kind of all pops together really nice. Yeah. And with the, with the backbone, it's like it. Just adds a little bit of a cherry element to it. Yeah, pull pulling that port and amaro out of it a little bit more. Yeah. Oh yeah. And cherry. And cherry. Yeah. 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 So what's been going on for you, Rob? How's your life? Just been busy, man. Yeah. I've been busy trying to keep things going here. Um, one thing we're trying to work on is finding ways to to bring more customers out here during the day, during the week. So yeah. if you're if you're a guy that works from home or has days off and you can work from home or, or elsewhere, come in here, use the Wi-Fi, sit down, have a drink and a smoke, and just relax. We got our Wi-Fi. We're pretty wide open during the day. Yeah. Um. So, you know, we're trying to trying to get some more you know some more people coming out during the day to help us out a little bit. Yeah. Um. That's really about you know the big thing for us right now. We're trying to see you know set up some new events coming up. We've got some other brands coming in. Um, 
Tony from Crux stopped by here last week, and he and I are talking about getting an event going with them. Oh, sweet. They've got a new cigar coming out, too. What is um, it? It's a, and he gave me one to smoke. It was a white band, and I think it's... It, I think what he said was it was the Bull and Bear with a San Andreas wrapper. Oh? Uh-huh. Oh. It was delicious. It was oh, delicious. Oh, my goodness. So that one, I believe, is coming out of PCA, which is in July. Um, That's amazing. That is. We're gonna, we've are gonna. we been talking to, um, to Sol and Enrique from 1502, getting an yeah. event, come up with them. we gotta, we got to finalize that. Yeah. Um, is that tenth anniversary from them? Is that a limited cigar? I don't or? know because they still have some. Yeah. So I don't know if it's if it was limited or if he just made a crap ton of them and still has them or what. I can't complain but about it's it. It's a good cigar. Like that. And I heard I, that I think was she in our told top that, ten last year. Oh yeah. Well, she told. I think she told me uh, last time I talked to her that. They've got some new stuff coming out at PCA, too. Oh, sweet. And as soon as she's got the details, she was going to send that to me as well. Yeah. Really hoping that uh, we want to do actually an event with Rojas coming up, too, hopefully. Um, that's one I'd like to get. I'd love to get Noel out here. Um, yeah. And if not, we can get Doug, Doug, Dougie Fresh come out and do an event for us. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we're going to hopefully have some good cigar events coming up. Um, the I'm really hoping that Rojas – comes out of PCA with that Maduro breakfast taco in a regular size. I smoked that again last week, and that is... It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, if that was in a regular size cigar, that would knock the uh, statements. I think it would, too, for me. I think like, it might I, be the I, best. I would grab that over a statements. I think I will too. I'm I'm ex I'm anxious to try it because you just never know when you when you increase size what it does to it. Yeah. But I mean honestly, it could be very similar to the statements. It could but be. But there was just so much more chocolate in that that breakfast taco. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of that going on. Um, Is the uh, new Warhead supposed to be coming out? Um, or do you know? Usually when? they announce it. I think around PCA. Yeah. It just depends on when it's available. Yeah. I mean. That's the only. That's one of the downsides with a lot of brands at PCA. They release it at PCA and they're not ready to ship them and sell them. Yeah. So who knows when you're going to get them? I mean, that's why we got. Uh, I mean, it took us forever to get the Espinosa stuff in last year. It did, and, and it was like you'd get a new cigar every couple months. <laughs> well, there was that. I can't remember which which cigar was it of theirs that came out, and we got it the week before Christmas. Was that? Was it the fifty five? Uh, no, it wasn't the no. 55, uh -uh. or was that the um, no, Los I, Calaveras, or not Los Calaveras, but the Los Ace Provincia? I was think it, I think it might have been that. Uh, uh, I don't remember Lazona Ten. No, it wasn't the Lazona Ten because that wasn't in my top. Because <laughs> whatever it was, I remember saying multiple times that if that would have came out. Even a month earlier, that would have been one of my top three cigars. Of the might year. have been the Lost Ace. I think it might have been Lost Ace. But anyway, either way, you know, I get it. If you want to release seven or eight cigars during um, PCA, yeah. it's hard to ship them all out immediately. But oh, yeah. at, least, at least communicate when you're going to ship them. That would be great, especially when people start getting excited and they see all the posts about them. And then six months later, they've forgotten about them. Yeah. So. Well, it is kind of an odd model to create hype like that and then just let it die out before they ever hit the shop. Like, exactly. you'll have the hardcore Espinosa fans like, oh yeah, keep it on their radar and they'll like they'll oh, yeah. be looking for them. And, and again, it's not just Espinosa. I mean, it happens to a lot of different people. Um, it's just the nature of some sometimes the nature of the beast, the nature of the factory getting them done. Have you heard anything about a new Los Calaveras yet? Mm -mm. No. No, and we do have an event coming up. Um, hey, Lisa, when is the Crowned Heads event? June 9th okay. is Crowned Heads. So Dave will be here. So we'll we'll try to get him on the show, and we'll talk to him about it and see what see when it's coming out. And if we don't yeah. get him on the show, I'll still find out, and we'll talk about it. Yeah. We uh, By that time, I'm not sure when you and I are going to be recording. Yeah, we might have to do that early in the day, depending on 
We'll see. We'll see because you're already gone at that point. So we'll figure out. Well, and I have a wedding June 10th, so it'd be rehearsal dinner the night of June 9th. Gotcha. So, so we won't we won't do it that time. I'll just ask him about it and figure out when that's coming. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, there's some fun stuff. I'm I'm sure coming here soon. Oh, I'm sure of that. Yeah. My goodness. What do you what do you get on the Los Calaveras? Straight air because I let it go out. <laughs> what are you getting? For me, it's really intensifying those cedary notes in there, um, leaning more towards that umami quality, and uh, uh, like a really floral baking spice on the retro hail. You pair it with the A uh, and W cream soda, and it really does just bring in a lot of those vanilla qualities and it, and it does remind me of the coconut cream pie still yeah yeah mm. yeah, yeah I'm, I'm getting i mean really on the relight a lot of the umami a little bit of the black pepper in the nose um but it, that the umami is kind of interesting on this one because it definitely leans towards that mushroomy kind of not not meaty savior savoriness, yeah. more of the the dark vegetable kind of yeah. savoriness. Yeah, mushrooms are vegetables. Mm. You heard it here first. You know what I mean. <laughs> with you know you. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fungus. I know. But yeah, a fungus. Fungi. Fungi. Well, I don't have a whole lot more. I don't know if you have anything else you want to add. I don't really know. We can uh, we can probably wrap this up, especially since we've done this pairing before. So. This is a wonderful pairing. Come into final third, either get this. Do we have the cream soda in the fridge? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Cream soda or, I mean, honestly, the backbone's going really yeah. well with it, too. Very so different experience either, either way. So we won't have coconut cream pie. No. Uh-uh. So don't, don't ask for that. Yeah. Don't do that. But, but, yeah, so where can people follow you? You can find me on Instagram at the Whiskey Pastor. And you can follow me on Instagram at Final Third Cigar. Um, you're either watching us on YouTube or on the, um, yeah, podcast platforms, that word. Yeah. Um, so thanks for following us again, again, you know, subscribe to our channels, like us, give us a review if you want to, but all all that stuff helps us continue to grow. Really does. Um, we do want to thank our sponsors again, you know, the boys from seven strong, uh, Deadwood, um, live. He's made this table. It's amazing too. We love these guys. We appreciate you guys. And we will see you guys all next week. Cheers. Cheers. Enjoy your week.